Hello everyone, I am Santosh and I welcome you to my channel Learning Bits. Okay, in this video, uh, we are just going to discuss how exactly we are going to draw a color cube and we are going to bring the camera into the scene or we are going to use the camera function so suitably we are going to move it fine? using any of a given x or y and z directions and whenever I want to bring in the camera into my scene so we need to make use of perspective viewing that is as soon as I bring in the camera it becomes a perspective viewing and so now my first job is to draw a color cube later on think about perspective viewing and bringing the camera into the scene and so now using this coordinates we are going to draw the cube using this eight points in the unit coordinate system we are going to draw the cube and we are going to make sure this cube is visible or controlled by the camera view and so now when i talk about an uh, perspective viewing now by default your opengl program is going to be an orthographic viewing and now if i want to convert this to be a perspective viewing something like in orthograph viewing the front face and the back face are of the same size the size will never vary as the object moves away or when the object is far from the viewer it should appear smaller in reality which happens in perspective but in orthographic it's parallel and when the object is near or far it's of the same size but in this case if the object is near it appears larger and as it moves away it appears smaller that is what the perspective viewing is going to be now we will discuss or we will bring in all this function into the program now and so let us start the programming and at the start we are going to have going to have this editor files and we are going to have the main function so let me close this manager tab and now in this main function so the very first api what i am going to use is so glut init and the parameter for this is going to be argument c and i'm going to have argument v i'm going to have argument c and argument v as the parameter from the command line argument and i'm going to have the window that is glut window size i'm going to have 600 comma 600 as the size and i'm going to have glut in it so window position so let me have the position at 100 comma 150 or any of the position what you want and i'm going to have glut in it so glut in it display mode and this is going to work in rgb and so glut rgb and bitwise or operation with the glut double buffer i won't use double buffer because this is going to be a 3d program or 3d object in 3d environment and out of those two double buffers what i'm using as two buffers one i'm going to use it as depth buffer and so i'm going to have this as glut depth and so now this is what the setup i've made for the window so now i need to create the window so glut create window and i'm going to give the title for this and i'm going to give a title for this as color cube color cube with camera and so now this is done with the title and once i'm going to have a window i am going to call the callback function to display what i'm going to put i'm going to call use the callback function as the draw function this draw function is going to be use the defined function and i'm going to call the glut main loop so that i'm going to be able to execute this entire program fine and now this draw function should be uh, defined but before that i'm going to have my init function where i need to do some sort of initialization to my program so that it's going to work in the specific environment which i'm going to choose and so i'm going to avoid so my init and i'm just going to set the background color as gl clear color and i want my background color to be of black color and so i'm going to put it as zero and the fourth parameter of the value is going to be alpha value the transparency 
I'll just keep it as one. And so now with this, I'm just going to I'm just going to enable the depth test because even I want to visualize the back face also and GL enable and GL depth test. I'm going to have GL depth test in this case. And with this, uh, as I told you, now this program by default is going to be an orthographic projection. Now I need to have perspective projection. This program or whatever the object I'm going to draw should be in perspective projection. Hence, for that, I need to use the function GL first term. I'm going to use the GL first term, and this is going to take four parameters. The first parameter is going to be the left value, the right, bottom, top, near value, and the for value. So I'm going to give the left as minus one, the same unit coordinate system, and the bottom is going to be, right is going to be one, and the bottom minus one and the top one the same unit coordinate system what i'm going to give for x axis and the y axis and the near value i'm going to give this as two it can be any positive value but make sure the near value is be always less than the far value and this should be always a positive value and greater than zero or greater than one is going to be good enough i am going to have gl first term and once this has function has been called, this function has been called to affect the projection matrix. Hence, you need to load the projection matrix before you're going to call this. Hence, the matrix mode, I'm going to shift to the projection mode from the model view mode. So, by default, until this point, my program was in model view mode. So, now I need to shift or switch to projection mode so that I can apply the perspective projection. As when the projection is done, I need to make sure that right now the projection matrix has been loaded with the identity matrix. And so I'm going to call this as GL load identity. And so once the projection matrix has been set with the perspective viewing, I need to get back to the model view. And so GL matrix mode, so GL model view. So now this is done. So now due to this set of function my program now will work in perspective projection this is how we are going to bring in the perspectiveness in your program if i don't do this by default it is going to be orthogonal projection and if you want to get back to orthogonal projection we need to replace this function with gl ortho fine and so now i just want a perspective projection so let it be as it is and now once this is done so now I'm just going to have the draw function which I which I'm going to define now. And so I'm going to have void draw which takes no parameter. And so I'm going to have void draw function. And as usual, the first API is going to be GL color. And so where I'm I need to clear two buffers now. That is GL color buffer bit as well as I need to clear the depth buffer to so gl depth buffer bit i'm going to have two buffers now and i'm going to i'm going to display this on the display device or the frame buffer by using glut swap buffer and this is the very first api in your draw function and glut swap buffer is the last api in your draw function in between this what you're going to do or what you're going to draw and i need to i need to have the eight points which i'm going to use to draw a cube and so i'm going to have gl float declare a data type as gl float and i'm going to have point or v as vertices i'm going to have eight vertices where each point is going to be of three values that is i'm going to have 3d points i'm going to have eight points and each point is going to have three values in 3d coordinate system and I need to initialize this and so I'm going to open pair of curly brackets and inside this I need to I need to create or I need to initialize every point as three three values and so let me use this structure because you can do it in one single line but I want my program to be structured properly and so I'm going to use this so now let me let me bring in the points now Fine. now this is the points what i want to what i want to present if 
find so now this is the points what i want to present as this is going to be the first point which i want to project over here and the first point is minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 this is the first point second third fourth fifth point sixth seventh and the eighth point and the first point is going to be minus 0 0.5 you can just have a look at over there and 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 now the first point is done and the second point is plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 and so on so let me give the space so that i can add up sign if i want and and the next point is going to be the third point is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and this is just minus 0 0.5 next point is the fourth point is minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5 let me copy this properly here copy it i'll just give the tab okay so now I'm just going to this as minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. Now this is the four points of the front face. Similarly, the four points of the back face X and Y will be intact. Only the Z value will change from the positive value to the negative value. And so I'm just going to copy this and all this Z value I'll make this as the negative. And now all the eight points has been initialized. So now using these eight points, I'm going to draw a cube and which is going to take eight parameters because to draw a point, I need eight parameters. And so V of zero is the first point, that is V of zero, the first point which contains three values. The second point is V of one, similarly V of two and V of three v of 4, v of 5, v of 6, v of 7. So now this cube is going to take this 8 parameter and so now this cube is going to be an user defined function and so I'm going to have void cube which is going to or which should accept 8 parameters and so v of 0 is the first parameter so similarly, I'm going to have eight parameters, eight formal parameters. You can give any name of your choice in this case. So let me maximize this. Fine. I'm just going to have, so this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This is going to be seven, V of seven or V seven, and this is V six v5 v4 v3 v2 and v1 and end open the body of the cube and now if you just look at this i'm just going to have the cube which are represented in the form of v0 v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 and v7 and you know what combination of the points you should make whenever you want to have the front face or the back face the left the right the bottom and the top and so you're going to use the appropriate one and when i'm going to have a cube if you're going to have any sort of a cube so the cube is going to have six faces the front face the back face the left the right the bottom the top faces and so in that case whatever the points you're going to choose now it's just going to be the same surface every time a square a square all the faces is going to be a square so instead of drawing this as individual instruction let me have a function which is going to draw me a square hence now i'm just going to have a function called as square i'm going to have a function called as square which is going to draw me the face of the cube and so I'm going to have square, which should take how many points as the four point that is V0, V1, V2, V3. If I want to draw the front face, 
And so I'm going to have V0, I'm going to have V1, I'm going to have V2 and V3. This is going to make my front face. And when I want to draw this square, I'm going to have this as a function and I'm going to define this. So now which should take how many four parameters as it's going to be four parameters and let me give the formal name as a b c d for the four points so i'm going to have this as a b and c and d and so open the body of the function so now inside this function i need to i need to display a polygon as a square and so i'm going to have gl begin and gl polygon and this is going to end this block and inside this block i need to have four points to draw a polygon or a square and so i'm going to use gl vertex so 3fv i'm going to have 3fv because it's a three dimensional point as the floating point values and every point now is in the array and so i can directly use this as ea itself because this is going to be in the array form and so i can use this this way of giving the points if it was not array then you should have used this as individual values this is the advantage of putting the points inside an array and so this is going to draw me a square so hence i'm going to have first square which is going to be the first face and i'm going to copy this i'm going to do it six times to draw the six faces and the front face is going to be as usual 0 1 2 3 and the back face is going to be 4, 5, 6, 7. Go in any one direction. Either the clockwise direction or move in the anti-clockwise direction. That is what you should do. And so now I am just going to have back face. So which is going to be V4. So never give the points in zigzag order. It should be in any one of the order. So V5. So it is V6. And I am going to have V7. And the left face. The left square is going to be 0, 4, 7, 3. So 0, 4, 7, 3. And the right face is going to be 1, 5, 6, 2. I'm going to be 1, 5, 6, and 2. And the bottom face is going to be so 3, 2, 3, 7, 6. 3, 2, 7 and 6 and the top face is going to be 0 1 5 4 0 1 5 and 4 so this is done so now all the face whatever i'm going to display is going to be drawn in the same color it's going to be in the same color so if i want to put in different different color because the cube what you're going to draw now it should be a color cube if it wants to be a color cube then all the face color should be different different color Hence, I am going to have a color red here. I am going to have yellow color or the green color and so on. I am going to give different colors for the different faces. Hence, I am going to have this as squared. So, before I am going to draw the first face, I am going to call the function gl color 3f. And I am going to pass the parameter as 0100, 0, 0, which is going to draw me the color red. It is going to draw me the color red. And the next phase, so let me use this as the color green. The next phase, so let me give this as color blue. And the next phase is going to be the mixture of red and green. And the next phase is going to be the mixture of red and blue. And the next phase is going to be the mixture of green and blue. Right. So, this is going to be different color. So, now uh, almost our program is done. Our program is done. Now, we will just see once I execute what is going to happen. Fine. So, I am just going to compile this. So, there is no any sort of error. When I execute this, oh, there is no cube displayed. Uh, no object has been displayed on the display screen. The background is color clear to black color as I have set. But no, nothing is seen. Nothing is seen because we are missing something here. 
if you are working in a prospective environment if you have made your program to work in a prospective environment or prospective projection without camera point without you position the camera you will be not able to see any object hence this is the time we need to bring in the camera function hence wherever we are going to draw wherever we are going to draw the cube so before i am going to draw the cube i am going to use the function glu glu look at function this is the camera function which takes nine parameters that is the camera position where you want to position and where exactly you should view at and what is the up direction of the camera is going to be this is what the nine parameters you want to pass so now whenever i am going to position the camera so let me position the camera at 0 comma 0 and in the z axis so let me drag it back fine i'm just going to drag it because again if you give 0 it's going to be at the origin of the dimension itself so to drag it let me give this as 5 because if you just observe in the gl first term you are given the value as 2 to 10 and so give any value between this 2 to 10 you can choose any value and so I have given this as 5 and you should look at the origin of your coordinate system hence this makes up my six parameters so my camera is positioned at this point and it's looking at the origin of my coordinate system and my up direction of the camera is going to be y axis hence so it's not x axis it is y axis it is not z axis and this is where the camera function is going to work now and whenever going to bring in the camera function you need to make sure that you are going to load the entity matrix hence we are going to call the gl load entity matrix so i'm just going to compile this program now and execute this so now you are able to see the cube you're able to see the cube because you have used the camera function and this is how the camera function should be used and and just and just have a look at this so when i'm going to have this as 5 and what if i'm going to increase this size to 10 i'm moving the camera away that is this is my cam this was my object and this was my camera right now my object and camera was positioned like this fine so now um this was the 5 value what i given for the camera uh, given 8 which will take the camera further away hence object is still in the place only i'm moving the camera out or moving the camera away from the object hence the object should appear smaller yes the object should appear smaller when i'm going to execute this hence compile this and execute this. so this is going to appear smaller than the previous one so now let me give lesser value than the phi let me give the value as three that is it was 8 now it appears smaller now i am moving the camera to 3 hence the object will appear larger the cam the object is still intact in the same position only i am moving the camera now hence i am going to save this and execute this program now hence the object appears larger so this is how we are going to control the camera so similarly if you want to move in the x axis I can just give the value for this as 2 so now when I execute this now this was my camera so which the object is was still intact but I moved the camera in the z axis fine along with along with z axis I have moved it with the x axis also hence I am able to see this face as well as this face I am able to see the two faces and if i want to view the top faces i should move the camera in the y axis and so let me give the y axis value also and we'll see how this is going to look so let me give the y value as 5 and i'm going to execute this now just look at this camera position where it's going to make it has been 3 in the z axis and 5 in the x axis and 6 in the y axis this is what you're going to see all the three faces of the cube and this is how you can move the camera on any given axis in any given direction and so now i should be able to control this camera i can change this value and control the camera rather than using this as constant 
So let me use the variable here. Now, for example, if we give this as cx, that is the camera x value. So camera y value and camera z value. And now let me make this as the global variables. Let me make this as global variables because that variable I'll be using in a different function again. And so gl float, I'll be having gl float and cx is initialized with 0. And so I will just say cx is 0 and cy is also 0. And let me initialize cz with not 0. I'll be initializing cz with 3. Because if you give 0 here, you'll be not able to see any object. Hence, I'm going to initialize this 0. And now just compile this. And just check it out whether you're able to see the object. Yes, you're able to see the object. Hence, it's going to work fine now. And so with this, I'm just going to move, I'm going to vary this value. I'm going to vary this value depending upon what key I'm going to press from the keyboard of my program. And so now I should read the keyboard input to my program from the keyboard. And to read the input from the keyboard, you are going to call an callback function called a GLUT, so keyboard function. And this is going to take a function as a parameter which returns nothing but takes a function name of anything what you can do and which is going which should able to take three parameters the character what it is going to or what I'm going to press and the position of the mouse when I am going to press the character but these two values I'll be not using in my function because I just want to know only what character I have pressed. So depending upon that, I can just check whether I should move the camera in Z axis or in X axis or in the Y axis. Hence, I'll be using only this parameter, but still you need to use this two as the formal parameter. Hence, I'm going to have a function called as key. And now this function, key function, what I'm going to have we are going to have this as void key function which takes three parameters. The first parameter is unsigned. Un unsigned, I'm going to have character ch and I'm going to have int x and I'm going to have int y. Anyhow, I'll be not using x and y here, only I'll be using key values over here. So now I'm going to check out what is the key key character I'm going to enter from the keyboard and for that I'm going to use a switch statement. So switch ch that is what character I've been chosen. If the character what I'm going to have is going to be x that is the lower case x. In that case I'm just going to move the camera towards the negative x axis. that is I'm going to reduce the value of cx and cx equals cx minus 0 0.5 is it clear i hope it's clear enough for you and i'm going to break this case so similarly i'm going to copy this and now if i want to move or if i want to increase the size or move towards the positive x-axis i'm going to use the uppercase x and since the cx equals cx plus 0 0.5 so similarly as i have done for the x key i'm going to do it for the other two cases that is i'm going to have y case i'm going to have z case hence i'm going to have small y and capital y if it is small y that is cy equals cy minus 0 0.5 if it is capital y so cy equals cy plus 0 0.5 so similarly, I'm going to have small z, I'm going to have capital Z. And this is going to be CZ, this is CZ, this is CZ, and this is CZ. This is how this is going to work. And as soon as I'm going to update the key, you need to make sure you're going to call the display function immediately. Hence, use the function GLUT post read display this is going to call the display function whenever i'm going to press a key this function will be called and this is going to in turn cause the display function and updates the camera position 
and ask the cube in the view what it's going to have and so just save this program and compile this and I've just got error over here so now what's the error I've got so now I'm just going to have case yeah the, the problem is I should have a colonial not equals so it should be colon case colon not equals okay right so now save this and compile this no errors here I'm just going to have X over here and now when I execute this now just press Z when I press Z so the camera is moving towards the object the camera has been moved inside the object the camera has been moving outside now so now the camera in the Z axis it was somewhere here as I press Z it is moving towards the object and when the when the camera was on the surface you are not able to see any of this case that is I'm just going to have I'm just going to press capital Z now just look at this so when I press Z now this is going to be at this window over here fine and as further I move as further I move I'm just going to have a camera position somewhere inside this object now again if I press Z this will move at this surface since I able to see only the back face again if I press Z this will move out of the view hence the object is behind the camera hence you are not able to see the object fine and again if I press capital Z the camera will move back again and so capital Z will take my cube again and if I want to have Y value if I'm going to press Y value why go further yeah uh, just look at this there's one mistake what we have made so the bottom face whatever we have drawn it is zigzag that means we have not maintained the order so we'll just correct it then we'll just this is what happens if you're not maintaining the order now so and so now this is the bottom face what i am doing and so we'll just check it out the bottom faces i've given this as zero it's going to be zero one so it's going to be the bottom face this is the bottom face and so it's going to be v3 3276 so 3 2 7 6 oh I've given in the zigzag order is also supposed to be 3 2 6 7 is the mistake what we have made so 3 2 6 7 so save this and execute now right so now give the y value yeah it's fine now and use the capital Y it's going to move above the camera is moving above so the object will tend to move forward because as I move the camera above you can see the distance is increasing as the distance increases the object tends to appear small this is what happening hence I am going to work with X I can write it with X and capital Y or the Y so which is going to bring the object down and above or X I can view the object at any position or I can have Z I can have capital Z and so on so this is how the camera will be controlled now in your program this is out of focus now this is going to be out of focus so this is how we are going to control the camera in your program and this is what I wanted to show you in this particular program I hope it is going to be helpful for you thank you for this session Thank you for watching and if you have liked my explanation so you can put it in the comment box and for further such explanations you can subscribe and follow my channel thank you